Yo, this is Pop the Brown Hornet from out of Stapleton, Staten Island. And you already know I'm on the Drop the Gem show. Bumble fire! They tuned also, in, huh? They knew about that. They're funkadelic. You know what I'm saying? We the funkadelic era. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Different, a lot of different crazy elements of music and and fashion and stylistics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it worked. It worked for us. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't I don't know what would have happened if we had came out in this era. You know what I'm saying? You never know. No but it was, it was it was right timing. You know what I'm saying? For it was the era. right timing. You got a line that on one of your joints, it, it, it struck a chord with me. You said, uh, grew up the son of Mwanza and Georgia, conceived in the night of weed and sangria, right? And then he was like, <laughs> my, my, as a dope line, he was like, mama playing the hall of notes. Now I'm loving Dayla, right? And I know, I think Dayla, was that the Say No Go uh, sample that yeah, day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How big of a, no Say No Go, yeah. How big <laughs> of a uh, influence was Dayla on you? Because I, I, I feel like, uh. Come on, Diggable should have been in a native pride, tongue, yeah. in my opinion. You know what I mean? Right. I, I feel like that was a perfect fit for you guys. Man, they major influences, major, yeah. major, major influences. I mean, they want a group like De La Soul is a group that made me realize, damn, I can be myself. You know what I'm saying? And be accepted. No you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. okay, okay, you can, you can, you can push the envelope. You know what I'm no saying? Doubt. Yeah, right. That was that. That's that. That's what they did for me. You know what I'm saying? Niggas, niggas oh, they was all they, 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 they wasn't was corny. They yeah, Boss and True get no, busy, no, no, no. no doubt. Yeah, what, they was, not <laughs> was the whole insect vibe influenced by the whole Daisy Age and what De La was doing with that? Because, you know, they caught a little bit of flack and then changed with De La Soul is dead. But was that influenced by what they were doing back then as well? Partially. It's not fully, but it, I mean, it was no, all no. part, you know, it was a part of a menage, you know what I'm saying? We, we, right. The old school music that we into, uh, Mixed with the De La Soul, Rakim, Run mm -hmm. DMC. I mean, we was into all that type of stuff. All that mm -hmm. was, you know what I'm saying? But we felt like that Native Tongues spoke closer to who we, how we were as um, individuals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Rebirth of Slick. You know, when you think of 90s hip hop. Monster. You know, there's songs like Jump Around, you know, OPP. Yeah. You know, they're just anthems that you still play to this day. Slam. And, you know, you're you're going to hear them. You're going to go crazy. Da, 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 the boys. The boys, the boys. <laughs> Rebirth of Slick is one of those songs. Um, yeah. You know, it, it just is and always will be. So yeah. I, I would be remiss not to ask about the making of that song. Did you guys know you had lightning in a bottle after it was made? Like, talk about that whole vibe of making it and like going through the transition of it coming out to the world and having the monumental reception that it did. Yeah, I mean, it felt good, but I didn't. I didn't think when we was making it, I never thought it was going to be the song that was going to be that was going to determine how people saw us. You know what I'm saying for the right. rest of our career. You know what I'm saying. I, I right. and in no way or fashion, I'm not even gonna lie to you that I would say that that's that's the feeling I got when we made that song. Right. But I knew that the song was dope. I didn't even expect it to be. We didn't even want it to be our first single. We wanted a. We had a song called Brown Baby Funk mm -hmm. that we wanted to be a single that actually never even made it to the album because ah. we, we couldn't um, clear the sample. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, so then we had to go back to the drawing board and the label was like, yo, what about this Rebirth the Slick Joint? We kind of like, we like that vibe. And um, we tested it in a couple of little places and people are, are feeling it. We was like, where? All right, we thought about it for a second. He's like, "Yeah, that, that, that that's all right. We, we we feeling that. That's cool. All right." And then we just, we went with it. And um, next thing you know, uh, we get a call from Rosie Perez, who was the talent coordinator at the time for a TV show called In Living Color. Of course, color. Wow. Yeah, oh, yo, we all, we all had so yeah, yeah we all had. Legendary. <laughs> and she was right, like, right. "Yo." Um, <laughs> The Wayne yeah, Brothers is feeling. Girl. They was like, she was like, the Wayne Brothers is feeling the song. I'm feeling the song. Yeah, I would really like to come out to New York and meet with you guys personally, and, and um, and if everything works out, we would like to have y'all on our show. At the end and of the yo, show, I was yeah. like, yo, that was the show. That was. So man, I was yeah. excited as a mug. And when she came out, she actually she kept the word. She came out, which like That's she said, dope. she did with her assistant. We sat down and talked to her and ch and ch chat chopped it up. She was mad cool. And was like, she like Moki? Did she sound like that? What is quail, Alex? <laughs> but yeah, but then they, they flew us out there and we did that. And that's um, from there, the song just blew up after that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what? Um, a lot of I don't know if a lot of people, but 